If you're a 3D animator, something very exciting is when you get your hands on a new character rig. Now, technically the rig I'm about to show you in this video isn't really new. At the time of filming this, she's been out for about six months, but this is a super cool rig. It is the Azri rig. Here she is. We're going to be reviewing this character inside of Maya today. Someone on Twitch recently asked me live to check out the rig, so we did. And we did a little bit of a breakdown and I thought it was a lot of fun, so I figured why not do a more in-depth version here on YouTube. So if you're looking for a new rig to animate with, to put on your demo reel, to try doing some game animation for example, something non-commercial, this rig may be a great contender and we're about to find out. Now the Azri rig is a free rig available on GameAnim.com and is meant to accompany the GameAnim book. And if you've not yet seen this book and would like more information on it, JD did a great video over on his channel where he reviewed the book and shows you a little bit of what's inside and what you can expect when you go and read it. So link to that video down below as well as a link directly to the book if you just want to go and grab it. But enough talk, let's jump into Maya and let's see what this rig is made of. So this is what the character looks like when we come into Maya. In the bottom right corner, you may notice that there are lots of display layers already set up for you if you were to import or reference this character into your scene. This is where a lot of controls are hidden and we'll be getting to those a little bit later. For now, all I'm going to do is hide the sword visibility because we don't need to deal with that just yet. Let's start with the character herself. Now, great news for pretty much everybody watching this video. If we look at this character, we can see that she's very high quality, very detailed, very appealing, and the best part of all, if I turn on the mesh view, it's not an overly dense mesh. It's not too complicated. It looks really high res, but the polygon count is low enough that it's going to perform no matter what computer you're on. That's actually something they advertise on the website. If I go over to the description, you'll see that the rig is aimed at retaining a high frame rate even on lower end machines. So no matter what you're animating with, Hopefully this rig is gonna work just fine for you. I'd also like to point out that I'm not reinventing the wheel here. If you want more information on this rig and how it works, there is also an information page on this website that takes you to the rig basics and how everything is meant to be used, the proper way to use the different controls. And if I don't cover something in this video, it's probably in this list. For example, I will be showing how to get the sword to stick to the hand, but if you want a little bit more in depth, I'm not gonna get too into it because they already have sword parent switching and things like this on the page. So again, that will be linked down below. So back to Maya. The first thing I like to do whenever I download a new rig is just to check out all the main controls and see what may be hidden inside them. So I always go to the main control down at the bottom and just look over here and see, okay, just translates and rotates, cool. Then I go to the hips usually, again, translates and rotates. And if you're wondering why I'm talking about hidden controls, it's because if I click on say the feet, for example, you'll see that there are extra controls down here beyond translates and rotates. So I always like to check for those things first. Now, before we dive into the feet, I'm gonna go back up to the hips because another thing I like to check is what is the default behavior when you move the hip? In this case, it's called the root. So when I move this back and forth, notice how the head and the arms behave in relation to what I'm doing with the hips. They're all kind of staying with it and the whole top half of the body is moving like a popsicle stick, right? Now that's fine as long as I can change that. So if you're not familiar with follow alliance, this is a great time to get acquainted with them. So if I go to the head, for example, there's an option for parent. Now this control may be called follow align, it may be called parent, it, you know, there's different names for it. But what I'm looking for is a behavior to change the way that the head follows the torso or not. So in this case, the head's parent is set to local, which means it's going to do whatever its parent joint, in this case, the neck is doing. So when I move the neck, the head does what the neck does, basically. But if I switch the head from local space to world space, now, presumably, when I move this, the head stays on its own axis. It obeys basically this thing down here. This is its world controller, which is great because it means I don't have to counter animate the head if she's trying to focus and look at something. Now the same thing happens with the arms. Imagine you have a character trying to pick up a box. And so you've got the arms reached out in front of her. We'll just say that that's fine. So if I pose her as if she's about to, you know, lean down and pick something up, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the hip control and move her down. While the head still makes sense, looks like she's looking at the box, the arms are now down and I have to now go back in and counter animate these. I have to you know, do another step to get these to point back towards where I would want them before. That's kind of a pain. That's a waste of time if the rig has a control to handle that for me. So next to check is the shoulders or the arms, upper arms, and here you go, parent. So I can switch these from local to world. So now when I have her lean over to grab the box, I don't have to counter animate anything. She has that control and I don't have to worry too much about it. Now overall, I like the position of a lot of these things, the shoulder blade controls, this clavicle control. I like that it's kind of these butterfly wings on the back. A lot of rigs have it sticking out of the shoulder and when the shoulder gets pushed up really high, you lose it into the neck of the character. So I kind of like that this is behind her for once. I've never seen that before, but that is very nice. And if we go ahead and check out the feet, if I click on this box that the foot lives in, 
This is presumably where I would go ahead and move the foot from. I like this detailing around the ankles and how it works with the deformations. It really looks like she's wearing these like leather boots and they make sense the way they deform. We also have a foot roll control, which is interesting because often this is where you get the toe to kind of peel up off the ground, but that's not happening. You have a separate control that handles that, which is actually, I've never seen that before. So that's kind of cool. And then the toe tap is also this one. I've never seen that as its own thing. It's always been built in for the foot for all the rigs I've messed with. So a couple more controls for other things. You also have an IK and an FK switcher. So if you're gonna have her swinging and you don't wanna have the legs in IK, you can switch them to FK very easily. Another thing that's nice, I don't know if you notice this right now, but if you switch, you know, I'm grabbing this, this block, the IK block that the foot is on. If I come down here, there's IK, FK, I switch that, I turn it off. I switch to the other type of leg, but suddenly that block is gone. My first thought was, oh no, how do I get back to that control? If I click on another foot joint, you'll notice that they all share the IKFK control. It doesn't live only in that box, which makes it very easy to be able to switch back and forth. It's very convenient. It's actually a really nice intuitive choice. We have the knee pivots and we have all the spine controls, which, you know, they work like spine controls. I'm not gonna have to get too in depth here. Now what's interesting about the hands actually is that you have the wrist controls and then you have this thing along the palms called the hand grip. You will think it does nothing, but we'll see what that does in just a second. Let's go ahead and bring back the sword. I'll turn back on the visibility. The sword has a controller on the base that if I grab it and rotate it, you'll notice it rotates from this kind of center point where the, the hand would grab. There's another thing here, the weapon grip, which does kind of the same thing. But what's really, really cool about this sword, something I think is extremely intuitive, is that let's just say you wanted her to grab the sword. I'm gonna go ahead and move it, aim it towards the hand. And there we go. And let's pretend she's grabbing the sword, it's fine. What's awesome is one of those hidden controls inside the hilt of the sword here, there is a parent control, which is the same thing as before, like what is the sword going to follow? Inside here, there are several options, including a left and a right grip. So if I switch it to left grip, I don't have to do any parenting, any constraints, nothing. That sword is now following the left hand. So if you have her grip onto it, that's pretty amazing. I've never seen that in a rig before. Maybe it's a common thing among games. I have no idea, but that's super, super awesome. That saves a ton of headache. By the way, if you're dealing with a rig that does not have this, you can check out this video or this video on my channel. They both handle these relationships of parenting if you don't have controls like this. This one will stretch you off, but this is the one that has the how to do this without if the rig has built in. Now this is a good point for me to jump into maybe some more advanced controls. So if we come down here to the bottom right corner, we have all these display layers. I'm gonna go to control fingers and enable those. So now we can see all the different hand controls. And you'd have all the controls you'd expect. You have the knuckles, you have the fingers. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of grab all of these and rotate them. So. I'm not gonna do a perfect hand pose, but even just by bending them all in, that is actually a much better fist than you often get with rigs when you just curl all the fingers in. Usually they're, they're very flat and then you need to shape them better. This actually looks pretty decent for not having to do anything. They're all converging. The hand pose itself is looking pretty appealing. Anyway, something very cool. Let me just hide those uh, finger controls again. Let's say you want her to grab the sword, but you want to still be able to adjust things and have some flexibility. That is partially what her her hand grip control is for. You know, this control, you can animate the sword if you need to, have the sword, you know, clang and, I don't know, reverberate off of a shield or something if you need to have it have some shake. You've also got the other weapon grip here that can adjust it as well. So you can animate those two separately if you need to do some kind of a layered approach. There is a hand grip control too, so if you need to adjust where this thing is even parented to in the first place. Let's say you're doing some kind of a God of War thing where she's throwing the sword. I don't know if you would really do it this way, but just as a weird example, if I take the hand grip itself and move it over here, that's still connected to the hand. It's still constrained. So you could kind of have this like force sword thing. And I don't know if you'd actually, again, want to do it that way. Now moving down the list, we have lots of different controls. Let's just go through them really fast. We have controls for twists. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn those on. They're light gray because they're set to transparent or template technically. I'm gonna go ahead and let us mess with those. These are what we would normally call bend bows. These are a good way to push the geometry into more stylized shapes if need be. Get creative with it, but if you need to just manually force the geometry to go somewhere in a very specific region to get a good silhouette or, or whatever, these things could be a good way to do it. Moving down to controls for the cloth, you'll notice there are all these different controls. So if you move her arm up and then you notice that you are now penetrating the geometry and you don't want that to happen, 
you can use these cloth controls to manually adjust the geometry of the clothes. So no intensive simulations needed, you can just tweak stuff as you see fit. What's also cool is that you have control over things like the belt. So if you want her to be able to adjust the belt or mess with a satchel or if she's running and you want to see a little bit of overlapping action, you can have these little you know, bags jostle around, they can rotate and bounce and you know, different things like that. Same goes for these flaps on the boots. You can also have these move around. She looks like a very scary hitchhiker right now, so I'm going to go ahead and restart her pose. By the way, I do use Animbot. If you guys don't use Animbot, you should definitely check it out. I have a video on nine Maya scripts that can totally change your workflow. Highly recommend checking that out if you haven't already. But I'm just gonna go ahead and grab all of her controls and reset the pose to default. That's a quick way to get back to wherever you wanna be. Now, continuing on, we saw the twist, we saw the cloth. The base is just the regular controls here. Then we have the face. So if you're wondering where her eye controls are, for example, that's this. So as I move this around, you can see that that is the control that moves her eyes. Let me go ahead and adjust the focal length of my camera so we can actually see what these are doing. There we go. So this is the master eye controller, as you would expect. And you can also independently control each eye if you need to cheat the angle or tweak it. What's also nice is her eyes are very clear. They are probably the most saturated thing and they're very vibrant on this character. So they read really easily. Now inside the eye control, we don't have any extra controls here, but there are these little arrows sticking out of her eyes. And these are kind of the, the, the FK eyes. So if you wanted to manually control them, you could do it that way. They actually have a hidden control for the parent, which is aim, world, or local. So currently it's set to aim, which means they follow this thing, which also means if her head turns, you know, she's going to continue looking at that spot which can be very useful if she's focused on something in particular. If we switch this down to local, it's going to follow the head. So right now it's following her head. We can also set it to world so we can move the head and it, you know, she continues looking where she's looking, but it's also not affected by this. So as she moves around, we're actually getting kind of a combination of both. Looking at the other controls, we have these upper lid controls, which rotate down really nicely. And we can bring the bottom lids up a tiny bit. If you saw my blink video right here, this is a, you know, Here's a topic that goes perfectly with this. So it's actually a very easy pose to achieve because it's just one or two controls, the upper and the lower lids. And same goes for the eyebrows. There are one, two, three eyebrow controls, it looks like. So you have a inner eyebrow control, you have the middle eyebrow, and then you have the outer. So you can change the expression pretty well with only a few controls, which is nice. And as far as the jaw is concerned, we have a control down here, which with just rotation curves, you can, you can open the mouth, you can move it to the side. There's no built-in squish of the jaw, but that's good for speed because that would add a lot of processing time to you know, the animation. So this is just faster for your computer to handle. But you do have lots of different modifiers for the lips. So if you need to get a specific shape, you could still accomplish that pretty easily. The only thing I would like to add here is there's not a single control on the nose it looks like or anything on the ears. And that's probably just, again, for speed to just limit the amount of stuff you have to deal with. I would like to have something on the nose just a little bit. Again, it just it's faster without them, so I understand why they're not there. So quickly, I'm just gonna grab all the face controls and reset to default. Last set of controls, we have the hair controls. Looks like every major piece of hair has a few different joints that you can move around, so that's nice. It's very simplified, makes it very easy, it looks like, to accomplish what you need. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab all of the hair controls. Maybe not those ones, I'll leave those alone for now. And there we go. Looks like we have quite a bit of flexibility. Overall, I mean, this rig is set up really nicely. It's super high quality. It's really intuitive, which is nice. There's not an overly complex amount of stuff in here to deal with. It's very simple and understandable of how you should be using the rig. Overall, I mean, this is a free rig 10 out of 10. There are a few things I'd like to see changed, like not changed, added, I guess. I would love to have, oh, hi, hi there. That's just a, a workflow preference. It's, you know, there's more than enough flexibility in there. 
to get what you're after. Also, if you do choose to use this rig, there are some hashtags and a place on Twitter to tag any work that you post, especially because they were nice enough to provide a free rig and a book that's very affordably priced with a lot of great information. But I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the first of what I would like to be a series of animation rig reviews. So if you have a rig that you'd like me to check out, something that you're curious, wondering whether it's worth the money to actually buy a paid rig, whatever it is, drop it in the comments down below so I can check it out and hopefully review it in the future. And if you wanna see me use these rigs in different shots or just different test examples, things like that, head over to Twitch where I do different animation streams on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And for other cool perks such as voting on videos, submitting interview questions, and downloading the project files for everything that I do over on Twitch, you can check out the Patreon. All of it is again linked below. So thank you so much for watching to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Are you playing?